Okay, so this is from exercise 7D, question 13, and it says using the identity sine squared a plus cos squared a is 1, show that sine to the power of 4a plus cos to the power of 4a is equal to a half 2 minus sine squared 2a. So I'm not sure what I think is going to be the best way of approaching this one. Um, did anyone do this one and have a good starting point that we could share? To square both sides. Great. So if we start off with this thing that we've got here, to try and come up with something that looks like this, we're going to take sine squared a plus cos squared a equals 1, and we're going to square this side and square this side. Why is that going to be a good thing to do? because then you'll get the power of four terms you've got here, and then hopefully we'll be able to do some rearranging to come up with this thing. So if I square this, I would have sine to the power of 4a plus 2 sine squared a cos squared a plus cos to the power of 4a equals 1. Now this is the thing I'm interested in. I want to keep a hold of the sine to the power of 4 and the cos to the power of 4. So I'm going to say sine to the power of 4a Plus, plus cos to the power of 4a equals 1 minus 2 sine squared a cos squared a, like this. And then it looks like there might be something else that's going on because the argument here has changed from an a to a 2a. And this should look familiar as well. What does this look similar to? Sine 2a equals... 2 sine a cos a. Well, let's square this and see what we get. We would get sine squared 2a equals 4 sine squared a cos squared a. How do you have to notice you square all of those things there? But I don't have 4 sine squared a cos squared a. I only have 2 sine squared a cos squared a. So it's a half of that. So it's going to be a half sine squared 2a. So sine squared 4a plus cos squared 4a is 1 minus a half sine squared 2a. And I can keep working on that by taking out a factor of a half, which would be 2 minus sine squared 2a is equal to sine, sine to the power of 4a plus cos to the power of 4a. That's just part a of the question. Uh, part B of the question says deduce that sine to the power of 4a plus cos to the power of 4a is a quarter 3 plus cos to the power of 4a. So that's going to be fun. We've now got something to do with cos 4a. What is cos 4a the same as using the sine squared part of its identity? The double angle formula for cos, but in terms of 2a. It's 1 minus 2 sine squared 2a. That's the same as the double angle formula for cos, but instead of it being a 2a, it's a 4a. So instead of this being an a, this is a 2a. And we've got something that looks a little bit similar to that. Do we have something similar to that? Um, not really. Cos 4a plus 3 a quarter cos 4a. So we could actually now take this information. They want us to show that this is the same as a quarter 3 plus cos 4a. So if I wanted to do it in a slightly easier way, I could actually just substitute what cos of 4a is using this and hope that it comes out as the same as this thing that I've got here. That would also show that they're equivalent to each other. So I've got a quarter 3 plus this, which is 1 minus 2 sine squared 2a. So that's a quarter 4 minus 2 sine squared 2a, which is the same as this thing that we've got here, 1 minus a half sine squared 2a, which is that thing. So because I have showed that this thing is also equal to this thing. It's the same idea of actually um, trying to show that those things are all equal to each other. 
And then the last part of the question says to solve the equation being equal to 7. Well, which is the best one we're going to be using? We're going to now use this thing here. So for part C of the question, we're trying to solve 8 sine to the power of 4 theta plus 8 cos to the power of 4 theta equals 7. And we're going to use this bit here that we highlighted in yellow. So what do you think I can replace this left-hand side with using this fact that I've got here? Times by eight. I'm going to times this by 8, so I'll times this by 8, and a quarter times 8 is 2. So it is 2, 3 plus cos 4 theta equals 7. And then we just finish by solving the equation by dividing by 2. and then subtracting 3, and then proceeding with solving the equation from there. It's a tough question. Um, there's a lot of stuff that's going on in this kind of thing. Uh, but it's just kind of good to see like what is the, what's the ceiling of, of the kind of stuff that you might be expected to do in these kinds of things that we have here. OK? And oh, it gave you the hint in the question to start, start by squaring sine squared plus cos squared a. For part b of the question, I was a bit sneaky, and I used the thing that they'd given me and I changed that to get the thing that I already had. Rather than working on that thing to make it look like this, I worked on that thing to make it look like the other. Okay. <laughs>